Hey, what's up everybody? Today I've got an interesting video for you. Now the way I conduct my reviews is typically to talk about the subjective and then I overlay the objective at the end, but I'm gonna do things a little bit different this time. Instead of packing all that information into a single video, I'm gonna break it up into two separate videos. Now, let me say this. I look a mess. I haven't had a shower in a couple of days. I just got back from vacation at the beach. I got sunburned there. I've been spraying aloe vera on my forehead and I'm scared to take a shower because I'm burned everywhere else, right? And I use sunblock, but I'm a white boy, so I got burned, okay? Um, that goes to say that obviously I was not planning to make a video today. I mean, to not even have a shower, coming at you guys raw, dirty, dirty, all right? What my day was supposed to be was unpacking and then doing some of the stuff for my video reviews and whatnot. And then part of that was to do some blind ABX testing between two amplifiers. As part of that blind ABX testing, I was unboxing a new, brand new set of speakers and setting them up. And I was going to listen to them and do that ABX comparison. As I started to unbox the first speaker, I thought to myself, man, I've had people say that I don't listen to the speakers or that I only rely on data. And I thought this would be a good opportunity to provide some actual insight into how I conduct my reviews, which is to listen to the speaker for some period of time and then to measure it and then compare my listening notes to the objective data and see where things align, see where things don't align. So that's what I'm going to do today. Now I shot pretty much what you're about to see all of it on my iPhone in vertical mode, because I wasn't really planning on making this an actual video video, this was going to be more for a behind the scenes thing for my Patreon group, but I've changed my mind on that. So I do apologize in advance for the vertical uh, filming. Cause again, this was not part of what I thought I was going to do today. What I'm going to do is I'm going to follow this up with a secondary video where it mainly leans into the objective stuff. Then we can talk about this video, what I heard, and then that video about what I see in the data and we'll combine them there. Okay. So let's do that. Let's go ahead and do that. So again, all this stuff you're about to see is vertically oriented and I'm going to add myself in at the end, just so you know that it's over. Let's go. All right. This is Aaron. It's your boy currently unboxing. I don't know why I said it's your boy currently unboxing some rebel speakers. There's Teddy. Say, Hey, Teddy. Now here's the thing. I've had some people say, Oh, well, he doesn't really listen to speakers. He just looks at the measurements to tell you how they sound. Well, guess what? You're wrong. You're wrong. So to prove that, here's what I'm going to do. I'm taking these. You look, you can see the other one's still got the bands on it. It's still got the bands on it. This one just came out of the box, and I thought, I'm going to do this. So, Alexa, what is the time and day? It's Saturday, June 7th. Saturday, June 7th. Alexa, what time is it? Good afternoon, Aaron. It's 2.10 p.m. 2.10 p.m. Okay. All right. Now I've got them unboxed and set up roughly. So I'll have to play around with dial them in first, obviously, uh, just like listening and stuff. So, uh, Alexa, what is today's time and date? Today is Saturday, June 7th. Alexa, what time is it? 2.31 PM. All right, I'm gonna to listen to these for a little bit. I don't know, maybe five, maybe 30 minutes. I don't know. But then I'll jump back in. It will definitely be before an hour. Just to make sure that nobody thinks that I'm fudging stuff. Okay? Stay tuned. Okay. All right. I'm listening to Wanna Be Starting Something, Michael Jackson's, one of my go-to tracks. I don't care if you like symphony orchestra. I listen to what I like. Uh, the initial bass sounds good. Uh, the shaker sounds good. The hand claps sound a little bit thin. So that could be 800. Could be, might be the primary, uh, but I'm kind of leaning toward maybe like a harmonic, like 1600, maybe two to 3K, somewhere in that area. A little bit more excitement. It kind of sounds like it's missing, but that's the initial impression. Let me continue listening and see what I'm thinking. Oh, also, hold on. Alexa, what time is it? 2.34 PM. 2.34. Just literally first song I fired up. Okay, hold on. Okay, so continuing with that same song, uh, the bass to me sounds like it probably rolls off like mm, 50 to 60, somewhere around there, because it's not like super meaty. Uh, but, you know, could be a suck out in the room, so we'll have to see. Uh, soundstage is wide. So right now I've got the speakers pointed directly on axis. Why am I doing this here? Forget that it's got it pointed toward me. 
But yeah, right now the speakers are pointed directly to my seating position. Now I'll, I'll play around with that a little bit, but yeah, the sound state sounds pretty wide to me. So let me see what else I can hear. Okay, now listening to this Nora Jones track, uh, waiting, okay. Uh, the bass sounds like the bass guitar, right? Uh, sounds not thin, but it's not over-exaggerated. Her voice sounds a little bit more full. So I'm curious if like something in like the two to 500 range, maybe, I know it's a wide range, but it's like something in there. I'm curious if it's elevated slightly compared to maybe the rest of the mid-range, but I may be wrong. Um, also notice more sibilance in this particular album than I feel like I've noticed before. So I'm wondering if it's something in like the four to 6K region, because it doesn't sound like it's the top end of sibilance. It sounds like it's more like the lower end of sibilance. So I'll be curious to see if any of that kind of stuff pops up in the data as well. I know it's not audiophile, but again, it doesn't really bother me. Heart and Soul by Huey Lewis in the news. Uh, when he says turning, I wouldn't dream of turning her away. That's, the T sounds a little bit like a little bit more edge to it. And that's kind of why I'm thinking maybe it's that lower bit of a sibilance, but like in the 4K range. I don't know for sure, but that's kind of where I'm feeling it's at. Also, uh, this, the thing I'm consistently noting is that, or is that um, the kick bass is not really full. And so normally it's one of two things. It's either like the 40 to 60 Hertz region somewhere like the fundamental isn't full or it's like the one 120 region where it, there's not, it's kind of like a little bit cut out through there. And it's, for me, it's always a little bit hard to tell because sometimes it could be the room too. Uh, it could be both of those things happening at the same time. But for example, you know, if I want a little bit more kick bass and I don't want to cause over excursion with my mid bass, then I might EQ up around 100 to 120 hertz to give it that sound like it sounds a little bit more full in that area so i'm kind of wondering maybe if that's it but yeah the, the kick bass is just not stout and powerful like i like but i also like a little bit more in that particular region like one to two decibels more around 100 to 120. i'll be curious to see what the data shows for that as well all right this is the last one that i'm going to listen to and then i'm going to take a break for a while so hollywood nights bob singer um the snares, the hi-hat, well, not the snares, I'm sorry, the hi-hat and the cymbals, they sound good. They don't sound bright. They don't sound too subdued. They sound, to me, they sound kind of where they should sound. Nothing stands out good or bad. Uh, but I noticed, you know, his voice and, and other stuff, other songs, vocals kind of seem a little bit recessed, and there's not as much clarity um, or definition. So it kind of makes it sound like it's pulled back, you know, from in the mix. And snares just like they have the they have the the bottom to them but they're missing that attack and decay sound to them and it kind of bleeds in with kind of the vocals so again i'm kind of leaning toward you know i'm leaning toward like two to four k is what i'm leaning toward just because of that recess in the vocal and that lack of jump out at you with a snare hit you know it just doesn't and and even sax i noticed too sax sounds a little bit subdued so I'll be curious to see what the data shows with that. Um, just my overall impression then, nice wide soundstage, very enveloping, uh, recessed upper mid-range, uh, high frequency sounds good, other than like the four to six K sounds a bit sibilant. So there's definitely sibilance there. I noticed it more with Nora Jones, definitely stood out. Um, the mid bass sounds like it's probably okay on the bottom end, like down to 50, 60 Hertz. And then it, it rolls off from there, but that fundamental sounds okay to me. It just sounds like there's a little bit of a scoop somewhere between like one to 120, just because there's not that additional feeling of punch or kick that, that I'm used to hearing, or at least that I prefer, um, vocals sound at least with Nora Jones, it sounded a little bit more full. And I don't really notice that so much in male vocals. So I'm kind of wondering if it's like lower mid-range area, maybe is a little bit elevated, but I don't know for sure. Um, yeah, I haven't stood up and walked around to see like vertical height. No, I'm not really too concerned about that, but my ears are at the tweeter level, which I'll be curious to see, you know, from the data, if that's the ideal position or not. Uh, yeah, so I'm going to probably let these play for a little while longer just to you know, break them in, so to speak, and then I'll test them. And then I'll pick up the review from there. Also, I forgot to say what time it is. 
So, Alexa, what time and date is it? Today is Saturday, June 7th. By the way, you have three new notifications. Saturday, June 7th. Alexa, what time is it? The time is 3.13 p.m. 3.13 p.m. So I've been listening for a little under an hour, like 45 minutes, and I was able to suss out some of that. So like I said, I'm really curious to see how this is going to turn out in the data, what the data shows relative to what I heard. And, you know, maybe things won't line up exactly, but that's part of the fun for me is trying to figure out, okay, well, I think it's in this frequency range, but is it something else? Could it be something else? And then if I find a surprise or something, then I grab EQ and I make some changes and I say, oh, that was it. That was, that was it. So anyway, stay tuned and, uh, yeah, talk to y'all later. All right, peace. Okay. Uh, hold on. Alexa, what time is it? It's 3.28 PM. 3.28. I just got on the stand. All right. It's about to start measuring. I gotta run, Bob. Okay, so now that you have better insight into my process, I hope that you can appreciate what I'm doing here on this channel. It's not just data only, it's listening to what I'm hearing, taking notes, evaluating the performance, toe in, toe out, off the wall, to the wall, all of that stuff, you know, all the things that should matter about a speaker's performance are rolled up into, I try to make a 15 minute video, but there's so much other stuff that goes on behind the scenes that I wanted you all to get an idea of what actually goes on behind the scenes. Hopefully I'm bringing something unique here and hopefully this video gives you some insight into what my process is like. And I personally will be very interested to see how this data turns out and what areas it matches or doesn't match in my subjective listening. So. Stay tuned for the next video. And if you want some more behind the scenes information, hit up my Patreon page, patreon.com slash Aaron's Audio Corner. We'll talk to you all later. Peace.